I start with an apology. Uh, Horton Mifflin Harcourt's senior education consultant Hector Ramirez was due to speak to you today, but his plane was cancelled. Hector is a world leader in English language training. I am not. Hector is a dynamic, reality <coughs> and extremely enjoyable presenter. I am Plan B. <laughs> However, it is my honour to be addressing you and we will work with African Brains to get a video of Hector on the website for you to access in your convenience. On the bright side, it does mean that this presentation is a bit shorter and we can all get a copy of it soon. <laughs> I would like to share with you some observations and trends in ICT that we and my colleagues have observed from around the world and their potential impact in your countries. By accident rather than design, the English language has become the language of the internet. Maybe this is because computers and the web were British inventions, or maybe it's because American companies such as Google, Microsoft, Apple, and Facebook that dominate the World Wide Web. Maybe it's simply because both the British and the Americans are too lazy to learn another language. Maybe if the web was invented in 2012, we would be talking to you today about the importance of ensuring every student has a thorough understanding of Mandarin. Either way, we are where we are, so in order to make the most out of ICT, a good knowledge of English is required. While we work with organisations such as the Youth Not Foundation to support local languages, we all have a responsibility not to leave any child in the digital age behind, simply because they can't speak the dominant worldwide language. As an example, Wikipedia has 3.7 million pages in English. The second most dominant language is French, and that has 2.2 million pages. It is the same fact in Germany or in Japan. If you don't understand English, you are automatically restricting your ability to get the most information from the web. Much of Sub-Saharan Africa already has this advantage. Innovation is a clear driver to success, and it activates the student's desire to learn. Without doubt, technology is driving innovation in education. We at Horton Mifflin Harcourt have just seen the perfect example. We developed the world's first full curriculum iPad application called Fuse, and the results of the trial were just in, literally, last week. We get one class of students in California the latest textbooks, and the other class in the same school, iPads with Fuse Algebra application. The textbook only, textbook only pupils scored 59%, while the iPad only students scored 78%. <coughs> we can't promise that every pupil gained 19% on their test scores, but it's certainly encouraging for all of us that want to see investment in technology make the difference. It is also clear that no country in Africa is yet ready for a fully digital curriculum. Yet there are things that we can do to take the first steps. <coughs> Publishers, including HMH, have developed math, science, and English series that can be either fully digital, purely textbook, <coughs> or a blend of the two. How this could work in Africa now is obvious. Schools can have the that have the infrastructure can run the digital program. While schools that do not yet have the capacity to do this can run the same syllabus, methodology, pedagogy and teachers support using textbooks. As the textbook schools gain ICT, they can easily swap to the digital program and either save the textbooks to use if the power of the internet drops, or the textbooks can be redeployed to rural schools. It means that we don't have to wait to implement improvements and we have the students miss out while they wait for the infrastructure challenges to be met. I'm gonna skip some of the slides. I don't avoid them. I'm going to reference this slide later, so please make a mental note. <laughs> Children today are computer natives, and if you give them a typewriter, they would wonder how it works. As a father of two, it amazes me to see my three-year-old daughter asking to play with my USB digital microscope. For Christmas, she asked for a digital camera. It comes naturally to them. It is normal to them. Now, I confess I hate this phrase. The students today don't talk to one another, but they look at a screen. Whether this is BBMs, SMS, Facebook or Twitter, they spend a lot of time looking at screens. Little wonder that some have short attention spans with the blackboard. Chalk and talk does not inspire them. They want to discover and learn. Some countries are not there yet, 
that this will come very, very quickly. Finally, remember that picture of the baby in front of the laptop? It reminded me of my favourite quote, which happens to fit in well with the view of some students, parents and teachers from across the globe. The quote comes from the late Douglas Adams, most famous for the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series of books. He said that the technology that exists when you were born is reliable, safe and dull. Any new technology that comes around when you are between the ages of 15 and 35 is new, it's exciting, I've got to have it, and it may even be a new career for me. However, any technology that is invented when you are over the age of 35 should not be trusted. <laughs> it will only go wrong, and we didn't need it, we got by and far without it. Well, that quote was written a generation ago. And it is a, but it is applicable now to e-readers as it was then to CDs. With each improvement in technology, we have to adapt our brains to see the benefits and think like a 15-year-old. Then, everything is exciting again.